In this video, I'll share with you some very useful tips on working with slide layers in Articulate Storyline so you can be more effective on your next e-learning project. Hi, I'm Mark Spermon from Upward Online Learning where I teach you how you can create e-learning modules yourself with Articulate Storyline. And are you new here? Then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. Are you ready? Then let's get started. In Articulate Storyline you can have multiple slide layers on your slide beside your base layer. So in this tab interaction you see that I have here five slide layers on my base layer. So on my base layer I have five buttons that if I click on a button a slide layer will open. Now let's see what you can do with slide layers um, and some tips and tricks that you may never thought of that can be really useful in your next Articulate Storyline project uh, when you're using slide layers. So let's check out the first layer. Uh, and you see here, uh, I called it layer one, so we know it's layer one. Uh, and let's see the properties of the layer. So what you, ca what you can do is here, uh, select the layer, right click with your mouse, and go to properties and now you see your slide layer properties now the first check mark that is checked is that it says hide other slide layers and this means that if you open a slide layer article storyline automatically hides the other slide layers for you so you have don't have to do this with uh, triggers or something else now the second uh, visibility check mark is hide objects on base layer now let's check this and let's see what happens here on your screen. You see, I have selected this screen and all the objects on my base layer are disappeared. So if you have content on your base layer that you don't want to show on your slide layer, you can check this one. And what you can also do, um, here you can select all your uh, objects that are hidden, but if you want to uh, only hide uh, a few objects, uh, a slide layer has a timeline. You can here click on the green uh, or on the uh, triangle and you can here uh, click on it. And what it does, it opens the base layer timeline. Now, for instance, I want to uh, hide only my title on my base layer. I can move this one, uh, uncheck this one, and you'll see my title is now hidden. So this is a way to uh, move only uh, a couple of uh, objects on your base layer instead of all what you also don't have to do with a trigger at when your timeline ends is to hide it because you can do it with a check mark and here you have the option for allow seeking and allow seeking means that you will see a seek bar uh, on your slide layer and it works so let's preview this slide And you see in my player here, I have a seek bar now, and it runs. And if I click on my second slide uh, and it opens the layer, you see the seek bar also works and it runs until my timeline ends. So this means you can have a seek bar for a slide layer. Now let's continue to the properties. What you also have here is if you want to prevent a user from clicking on your base layer, you don't have to um, use any uh, overlays or objects you can do it with uh, a simple clicking this one it will prevent the user from clicking on your base layer so if I click this one I click preview this slide storyline is preloading it right now I'm now on my base layer I click on my second slide and you see I cannot click on any icons uh, I only can select uh, the things on my second slide layer now let's go back to properties again so and what you also can do is pause the time of the base layer so that means if you want to stop the timeline of your base layer you can check this one it will pause and for instance with a button or another trigger you can uh, play it if you want to so these are uh, some neat features let's continue 
Now, if you have multiple uh, slide layers on your slide, it can be useful to hide or show them when you're editing your slide or showing your other slide. What I've done here, if you're selecting one slide, you see that uh, an eye icon uh, appears here. And if you click it, you will lock uh, your slide layer and it will all be always all will be vis will always be visible so I locked here my slide layer 3 and you'll see it's always visible because if I uh, now click on slide layer 4 you see here that the layer 3 text is behind the layer 4 text this, this means all objects on slide layer 3 are always uh, visible And if you want your slide layers in another order, you can pick it and drag it in another order. Simple as that. And now something on the objects of your slide layer. Uh, normally uh, in your base layer uh, and you click on apply layout, your base layer uh, has a layout that is uh, created in your master slide. But you can also have layouts on your slide layer because if I select slide layer, for instance, my slide layer 2, I go to my slide on the left again, I click on apply layout. You see here also uh, different layouts. And here this was for center media, but I could also choose blank and then I can have a blank layout. And where can you find these layouts? If you go um, uh, to view, and to Feedback Master, these layouts are defined in your Feedback Master. So here if I scroll for instance down and you see here uh, the centered layout, uh, also blank layout. And here you can, for instance, if we on the blank layout insert, uh, let's say a character. This is a character uh, that I think is okay. We set it on the right. So now let's hide our, uh, our master. And you see, I've cho chosen here for this slide layer, my apply layout, my blank layout. And you see that this uh, image appears. So if I click on slide layer one and I want also this character there, I can choose my blank. And you see that the character is also there. So this is a really cool tip, for instance, if you want to have a logo on your slide layer or uh, another object that has to be on each slide layer, you don't have to copy and paste it, but you can add it on your uh, feedback masters. Do you have any questions about embedding your Articulate Storyline course in WordPress or about Articulate Storyline in Common? Then please comment below these videos and I promise to answer it. And if you want to create great engaging e-learning in Articulate Storyline, make sure that you get my free step-by-step -step guide on how I create e-learning in Articulate Storyline. And I know for sure that it will help you because it describes my whole process that I use for every e-learning module in Articulate Storyline that I built. And was this video useful to you? Then hit the like button below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos.